talk to you a little bit about the Journal of Supply Chain Management's first emerging discourse incubator. The idea of an emerging discourse incubator is basically to take your traditional special issue and stretch it out over a longer period of time so that there's actually a chance for authors to, in essence, respond to each other or have a discourse with each other. Um, and so we're sort of, rather than the traditional special issue which you could sort of think of as being cross-sectional, the idea of an emerging discourse incubator or EDI is to have a longitudinal specific focus. And our first emerging discourse incubator is going to be on the topic of networks where the focal actor in the, the network is not a for-profit firm. Um, and the way that this is intended to work is that we're going to start with a series of invited papers, and those invited papers should be available now, or the latest, early next week. And those invited papers form the basis of the discourse, and we'll then accept papers into the journal for the remainder of 2018 that are targeted toward this special discourse. So the idea is that even people starting research now should be able to actually participate in the discourse, and people who are well along will be able to start participating now. And in fact, we've already gotten some submissions in addition to the invited papers. So I invite you to take a look at the invited papers, which, like I said, should be available now. Um, we invited three papers, and in each case, we started with people we would consider really eminent scholars working in the space. So people working in somewhat non-traditional spaces, if you will. Um, and in two cases, they then reached out to uh, really energetic, young, emerging scholars that really filled out the papers in really cool ways. And in the third case, they actually added a uh, manager of an NGO to sort of fill out the space. So in every case, you've got both eminent scholars and really cool insights coming from other places. Um, and while I'm not going to tell you much about the papers, because of course you can read them, I think it's kind of interesting to see what they have both in common and different. So two of the papers talk about NGOs and how NGOs manage their networks. And the third looks at social enterprises. So organizations that have to be economically viable, but for whom the economic viability or profits is not the fundamental reason for which they exist. And when you look at all three of those papers, you see some common themes. Um, first is that all of these entities really do manage their own supply chains. And uh, to some of you, that may seem a little bit strange, and to other of you, that might be self-evident. But if you think about it, we're always talking about an entity like Foxconn being a supplier to Apple, but we also acknowledge that Foxconn has their own supply chain, with Apple as a part of it. Um, yet when we talk about an NGO, we typically talk about them as being an entity, a stakeholder that tries to influence firms. So even when we talk about firms cooperating with someone like an NGO, we always treat them as somehow not part of the traditional supply network. Yet from that NGO's perspective, the firm is, they're engaging with the firm for a reason, and it's to achieve specific goals. And so when you look at these papers, they talk about how NGOs go about achieving their goals, how they structure their networks, who they might have in the networks, how they might configure the networks, and so on. In other words, very, the very same questions that any other supply chain manager would ask, but these networks are very different. Um, first of all, they are probably more complex than most traditional supply chains. And I say that not necessarily because of their scope or the number of members, but more because they're going to have, first and foremost, competing logics. So they're going to be heterogeneous in terms of the members' goals. Some members, those for-profit firms, are still going to be looking to maximize profits. Others are going to be looking to make transformational change, to save the whales, or whatever. Um, so there's a great deal more heterogeneity in the goals of the people involved. There's also a great deal more heterogeneity in terms of the resources, the expectations, and so on. Um, in addition, much of our existing literature implicitly focuses on how firms use either financial resources or incentives or even their power as a form of incentive to achieve their goals. But when you start thinking about NGOs, social enterprises, and so on, they tend not to have a whole lot of money. They tend not to have scale. They may not have power in the traditional ways we've thought about it. 
but they have to achieve goals too. And then the question becomes, how do they do it? So they need different resources. Perhaps they leverage social capital or they need to configure their networks differently so that they don't have to be in a position where they can only get other members of the network to do things financially, right? So they have to, they may need to do the same types of things. They may need to choose suppliers. They may need to configure their network and so on. But the suppliers they choose, the way they configure the network and so on also have to be somewhat different. And the final theme that comes out of these three papers is that there's every reason to believe that while they're focused on NGOs and social enterprises, that the insights from those papers should also apply in other settings. Um, for instance, if you return to that idea of trying to operate in a network and get things done where you don't have a whole lot of money or a whole lot of power, that should apply to most small companies or to suppliers who deal with very large customers. So there should be ways to generalize up from these papers, not just to expand our discussion into other types of entities, but also back into the wider supply chain management research community. So these three papers are excellent. I highly recommend you go take a look at them. And I also want to point out that they're just a start. They only deal with two of the possible focal actors that they could have. We've had people that approach us about doing research on government entities, on military units, on universities, and all of these entities are perfectly appropriate. In other words, the whole idea here is to start thinking about the idea that while for-profit firms obviously have a supply chain, there are many other supply chains that we could study and it's about time that we do. Thank you. Thank you.